There was always the mystery, the mystery of life, the mystery of cinema. The film itself is organic. It's got a life to it. It was an organic process. Natural light, it's the inspiration for filming. The necessity for balance, light and shadows, warm color, cool color. I think the framing and the, what the camera does in relation to the actors and the sets is the most crucial. For many, many years, we've been called the keeper of magic. The people behind the viewfinder, whoever they are, I think they're all magicians myself, because they're the only one who uh, imagine and see, and the rest is, I think, all magic when we see it on the big screen, I think. But I think the, the true magicians in the film have been, I think, the cinematographers who worked in the film days more so. Because those days, uh, no one knew what the, what his photographing would look like. It was only the cinematographer who had an idea of what it should look like. Because often you didn't see anything what he shot quite a few hours or many days after. So till that time, nobody knew except the cinematographer. So the magic which existed was only in the minds of the cinematographer that time. Though now, over the time, uh, because the digital photography, I think it's a shifted now because we have monitors, we see immediate playback right away. So everyone can see it now what exactly we're getting. So that magic has, I think, is disappeared to, a, to an extent now. The cinematography challenges were much different the days in the film. And, and again, like in every new technology comes in, it's pluses and minuses. Yeah, there are so many pluses with digital photography because there's endless possibilities now with digital. You can do anything you want almost. Whatever you have imagination, you can almost do it now. But we also lost something. We lost the personal touch which film provided us. Uh, a cinematographer was the only one who had a pretty good idea what it should look like and where it should go with it. And, and to do that, he was much more involved on a personal level with the film. He had to be focused on the film. He had to be very, very clear what kind of visual interpretation has to be, because he was the one who had to provide that. So that responsibility, the stand alone, I think is gone now. It's much more on everything done by committees now. Everyone can watch it and then they do it. And of course, a lot of stuff is done in the post now. So you have so many levels of people who, who contribute to the film, as opposed to in the old days, it really was a standalone cinematographer who was the eyes of the production. Cinematography is just not only doing the camera work itself, but you had to coordinate that with so many other departments. As a cinematographer, you work very closely, first of all, with the director. You took his vision, his point of view, what he wants to do with that film, where he wants to take this film. So you had to understand all that first. Then you are the one who had to translate that through the camera. So this, may, this means you work with a costume designer, you work with the uh, art director, you work with the makeup, hair. So it wasn't just a question of just let's get the camera and now I'm going to expose it for you. Yes, that was the ultimate challenge, but to get there, you had a lot of other work to do to coordinate with all the other departments. And let's face it, I'm, as a cinematographer, I'm only as good as what's given to me. I'm not a magician. Question is, what's given to me? So how do I get those elements? So it will enhance my, my, my photographic uh, images. Well, for that, I need help from the set design. I need the help from the costume, I need the help from the uh, makeup, hair, and 
hopefully even from the director how to block some of those scenes to get the best maximum effect for that scene cinematically speaking. Uh, I started my career in Australia and in those days uh, to get into uh, into the film production you had to have a degree. Television just came in and they were hiring a lot of people and I was very happy to be there at the right time except I did not finish my university. I was just so eager to just go and start making films so I never finished it. I went to two year, uh, one year university at Melbourne and then after that I said no I want to make films. Well it was good to do that except they will not take me into the production end of it. So I always wanted to make films. So then I thought well the best thing to do, camera is very much through the camera you tell a story. So I thought well I'm going to buy a camera and start making my own films. This is exactly what I did. So I came from the cinematography background to make films. But the ultimate, uh, my aim was to make films. And it just happened to be I came from, uh, from the camera side, which is not as common as, you know, most, most directors, filmmakers come from as a writers or as an actor even sometimes, then they want to make films. Well, I came from the camera side. Mm. But ultimately, camera is very much part of making a film. It's a very important element. I mean, there are three things I find is, is very crucial to make a film. You've got to understand your camera. You've got to understand your writing. And then you have to understand the actors. So those three elements, if you can, you can master it, it helps you to make a good film. So I happen to come from cinematic background. And I'm very, very happy that I did that because ultimately it's, it still has to be everything has to go through the camera and if I understand the camera well that gives me a very strong base very strong foundation well this to me I tell you this was in one sense this was one of the most difficult film I've done uh, simply not because of the the content it was trying to get hold of these people first of all they're scattered all over the world and they're all busy so hard, trying to get some time from them, it was very difficult. But once I got them, it was fantastic. It was the most joyful thing I've ever done in my life. Because we're talking about the love of cinema. And I shared with them, and I understood that. So it was a, some kind of a, like an inside club. We all felt very much at home. They love talking about it. And, and an interesting thing is also I found that most cinematographers, they are kind of a quiet people. They're so concentrated on their work and they're very uh, serious. They don't have much of a sense of humor and all that stuff because they're always worrying about, especially in the film days. When you're exposing for the film quite often, I remember that, that, that there were times I didn't sleep all night. And, and the reason was because I just thought, I hope I have given the right exposure. I hope that it was in focus, you know, I hope uh, that lighting gonna uh, bring what the scene needs and all that because you didn't know till you saw the dailies two days after three days after depending where you were and then it's too late so that kind of attention that kind of a concentration was quite difficult at times but looking back it was fantastic because this way I was totally totally uh, concentrated on my work and, 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 and had the responsibility for it, which I loved. So I think, I think that, that part I shared with all the cinematographers when I talked to them this time. And, and, and since because we never had the chance before to open ourselves up, here it was now, it was so much easier to discuss them because they didn't have no pressure this time. They were not behind the camera, they were in front of the camera. So that was absolutely brilliant. I tend to go very much on honesty of the film. Honesty of the light, honesty of the emotions, and how the camera should move and all this. I prefer very much if it's not to show the camera. I'm not interested in showing the camera. 
I'm interested in what's happening in front of the camera, my concentration is totally involved in that one. To do that, you've got to keep everything very simple and your focus should be what's happening in front of the camera. And quite often I find that we, we uh, in, as a cinematographers, we get carried away with our own world of lights and colors and everything else, which has nothing to do with what's happening in front of the camera. So I tend to like that very much, to, to keep it very simple, but also not to impose the camera on the story or a subject. But at the same time, I think a lot of you comes into your work. It doesn't matter what you do, on anything you do in films, it comes off you. So I find quite interesting that, that how the European cinematographers they are so much into the art and the paintings and coming back from different Rembrandts and Da Vinci's, but they study all that and how they use the metaphor or their work into their work. Then you look at the other side, which is partly, I am part of that, is the Australian side actually. And I, I give, you know, my knowledge, whatever I learned, mostly based in Australia actually which is much more open, much more um, adventurous, uh, and much more, let's just get on with it, whatever there is, then make it work somehow. It's their practical side of filmmaking. So on the other extreme, and then you have in between two, three other facts, so you have the, the very much the Japanese or the Oriental approach, which is very, very controlled, very restrained all the time, and very, you know, focus on that side and then you have the Indian side which has <laughs> totally out of control everything goes colors and whatever you know I mean, camera movements and the zooms are going in and out you know what I mean but again all these things I think is interesting different techniques different approaches expresses our own personality our own psychology our own psyche I think and that I find quite interesting I find quite interesting that how different cinematographers bring a different sensibility to their work.